but let's, I'm going to go over a little bit of a, a case study here on a car that I came across with an air conditioner problem. This vehicle went to two different shops. The, uh, the problem or the complaint at the first shop was that there was no AC. Typical problem, I have no air conditioning. The mechanic in the first shop went to right away instantly to the low pressure switch, just like many people do. It's probably the easiest thing to get to out there, all right, because there was no power getting to the clutch. Now, the first mechanic that looked at this car took the connector off and he jumped it. Still nothing happened. The second thing he did is he took a LED test light. Took an LED test light, and when he crossed the LED test light, on this terminal he got a red light. On that terminal, he got a green light. So the wheels started turning, and he said, okay, well I have power coming in. I have ground on the other side, which is probably going to the clutch. The jump didn't work. So what am I going to do? All right, he took B plus and he put it right to this terminal, which he had the green light on. Put it to that terminal. Nothing happened. All right. However, when he happened to look up, he saw smoke coming out of the dashboard of the car beyond the windshield. So after airing out the car, after airing out the car. Uh, that evening when the customer came, he just said to the customer, hey, look, this car's got to go to an air conditioning specialty shop. So the customer said, okay, what am I going to do? He didn't charge anything for it. So he took it to an air conditioning specialty shop. The second shop got the car. He basically did the same thing, but instantly to the low pressure switch in the circuit. <coughs> He didn't use an LED test light. He used a standard incandescent test light. He went on both of those terminals. All right. He got nothing on this one and nothing on that one. He said, okay, there's no power there. The control head must be bad. Now, he didn't realize, of course, that the uh, control head was bad because it was burned out. It smoked. But he says there's no power getting to this thing at all. So he said, that's it. I'm going to uh, tell the customer he needs a control head. Now, needless to say, this guy, neither of these fellows looked at the wiring diagram of this vehicle. They went right to the low pressure switch, which so many shops do. Go right to the low pressure switch. So what happens, he has nothing, so let me, he said, let me jump it anyway. So he jumps it, again, nothing happens. He puts a new control head in, same exact thing, same exact reading. Nothing happens at all. He says, well, somebody, I gotta power that clutch somehow. So he goes to the switch, uh, to the connector of the low pressure switch. But he, he's a little smarter. He puts a fuse patch lead in. God bless you. He puts a, a lead in that has a fuse in it to B+. Plus. He doesn't know which one to go to, but when he gets to this one, the fuse blows. He tries disconnecting the clutch. He tries disconnecting the high pressure switch. He tries disconnecting different things. Every time he puts power on that, lead, the fuse blows. That's when I get the call. Richie Schwartz gets the call. All right? He's got a short in the car. So he says. All right? Now we'll take a look at the actual wiring diagram of the car and why everything happened. All right? This is the actual wiring diagram that I found. When I, when I looked it up, of course, I didn't do this diagram because it had everything under the sun in it, including the radio fans and uh, the cooling fans and everything else in, uh, in the system, but I withdrew it. 
just for the clutch circuit. All right? Now, if you take a look at the low pressure switch and the high pressure switch, it's just like it was in the other diagram, just the switches. They are connected just like that. But on this particular vehicle, what happens is the PCM puts a 12 volt reference out through two switches and to the control head. It's only a reference voltage. You have B plus coming into the PCM. It goes through a resistor, a dropping resistor, and there's a comparator in the PCM. What the PCM does, it's watching the voltage on these two wires. That's what it's doing. It's comparing the voltage. When you turn the key on, it sees 12 volts on this wire, because it's direct ignition fuse. On the other side of this resistor, and since there's no load on it at all, there's 12 volts. When the comparator sees 12 volts and 12 volts, it doesn't do a thing. It just sits there. So what happens when you call for AC, when you call to this side, when you call for AC, the control head grounds that wire. All right? Now because going the wire is grounded, and that dropping resistor is dropping that down, the voltage on that lead will drop to zero. When the comparator sees zero volts on this lead and 12 volts on this lead, it turns around and sends a signal out to the clutch relay to turn the clutch on. Does everybody see how that works? So the comparator, when it sees that wire go to ground, it turns around and sends a signal out. Now what happened when both of these fellas jump from power to this wire here, if the control head was not calling for AC, it wouldn't have done a thing. But since they were checking for AC, what was that control head doing? Rounding that wire. So what it did was it, the first fellow, first mechanic burned out that control head. The second one didn't know that, but he determined it was a short. Again, that's what I got pulled in. They would normally blow that fuse if you put power on that wire. And that AC head was calling for AC. The control head was calling for AC. The actual problem turned out to be, on this vehicle, a bad AC clutch relay. And that customer went through a lot because, because they went for a new control head, which was, on that car, it was $480. Uh, I believe it was a, it was a, a Japanese car. I don't know what it was. But a lot of, a lot of your circuits are get, getting like this today. Not putting direct power in the cars, right? They're using a comparator circuit inside the PCM. All right. All right. That's the case study. Any questions on this one? Tell us. What the car? Excuse me. What the car for the job? I'll tell you. Yeah, I mean, if somebody could have, if somebody could have gone up there and just and just diagnosed it the way it was, it was a very simple. But you have to look at the diagram. So, so no, not only that, as, as, as I mentioned before, that's the difference between using an LED type test light or a power probe and an incandescent test light. There's not enough voltage going through that resistor to light that standard test light. All right. All right. Now, if you want to, we're gonna, I'm gonna play a video now.
Most of them will tell you, check for a battery drain in a car. Most of the manufacturers recommend you put a battery into the battery, you put one of the sides of the battery, the negative or positive. Then you hook up a, an amp meter, a knife switch, a battery knife switch. You hook up an amp meter there. And then when you open up the knife switch, the amperage goes through your, your amp meter. However, when you do this, what do you have to do to put a knife switch in between the battery? You have to take the battery off. Right? What are you going to drop out? Every time you take that battery off, you're going to drop your codes, you're going to drop everything out of the car. All right? Everything has to recycle. We learn. All right? You're not supposed to do that. All right? Now, this video is going to show you how fast it is. All right? To see uh, how much drain there is on a car. The only thing that you have to look out for when you're doing battery drains in any way, shape, or form is the time circuits on the car. In other words, you can't test for a battery drain before all the timers time out. And on some cars, it's as much as, it's as, it's as, much as 45 minutes. That means that if you even open the door of the car and then close it again, and reset the timers, you may not be able to test it properly for 45 minutes. But if the car is sitting and you prep it right, you'll be able to do it with no problem. All right? What we're going to do is we're going to use an amp meter you're from your motor meter, your 10 amp or 20 amp scale on your motor meter. All right? Ready to play that? You know, we're set up. All right? We're going to hook up your battery pack to ground battery. Now you can do this opposite if you want, but hook it up to ground, battery ground. You're going to take the positive lead of the multimeter. Turn the multimeter on, set, make sure it's set for your 10 amp scale. Hook it up to the positive side of your jumper pack. All right? And you're going to take the negative side of the multimeter and hook it up to a good positive source, such as the top of the alternator, the main terminal of the alternator. All right? Now you're going to look at your multimeter. You're going to see that you have a reading. That's going to tell you that you're hooked up. <coughs> if you don't have a reading on there, that means you're probably not hooked up. You better check everything. All right? As long as you've got some kind of reading that's 79, around 80 <coughs> milliamps or so, now disconnect the positive side of the battery. You're pa you've paralleled the system, so you've got a, dual, a secondary battery in there through your meter. Once you disconnect that battery now, any amperage that's going into the car is through there. Now you're down to 26 milliamps. What's the maximum milliamps you're allowed in the car? 30. 30. All right, this is within specs. Now I've seen it go to 50 and give people no problems if you use the car every day. Somebody now, just opened the door there. He opened up the door and, he, and he, just to show you that it goes up and then it'll cycle down again. <coughs> Now eventually, this car was not timed out. Eventually, this car could go down even further. It goes back down to the 25 million where it was, 24 million. Basically, all he's going to do now is reconnect the car. You've tested for a drain. That's how fast it is. Reconnect the car, disconnect your equipment, and you're set.
when you do your test. <coughs> All right? You, can, you don't even have to hook up. As long as your hood's open and you're ready to go, all right? You don't have to uh, do any hook up your equipment until you're ready to make your test. Let it sit out in the parking lot. Don't worry about it. Or in the shop or whatever. Don't worry about it. And yes? Don't lose any memory either. No memory. That's correct. You don't lose any memory. Don't send any codes. Don't erase any codes or anything. You won't set lights or uh, set codes in radios or anything. All right? Any questions at all? Yes? Is that a good way? Absolutely, because when you change a battery, you should always test for a battery drain. Anytime you change a battery. Okay. You do have an amp clamp that you can put over. All right. If you want to do a non-invasive, all right. One thing you do have to watch out for with amp clamps. They're very. They're actually sensing minute magnetic field around the wire. If you are close to things like the horn or any magnetic field, this can be tricky. It may not give you an accurate reading. All right? And if you do get the more advanced ones, the ones with the small, and they tend to be more accurate. They do. They tend to be more accurate. All right? The, the, the high uh, uh, efficiency ones. Although this one right here is one we picked up that this Got this guy with stainless steel. Whatever. You guys know. Goo tools. Goo tools. Okay. Okay, this, this particular amp clamp works real well on very low milliamp drum. It right. does work well if you got yourself a yeah. good meter, good scope. Right. It's a nice, easy way to do it. That's so you may want to see this with goo tools, I guess. Alright. Now that's non-invasive. Alright, so uh, you know, you can just clamp on. Alright, just just be careful. It's inductive pick up units, but uh, what, you have to zero them. Be very careful. Can I make a comment on that, Rich? Go ahead. One of the good ways to test that is to put the clamp next to the wire, but not around the wire, and see if you have anything there. Right. If right. you do, you're, it's being interfered with. Right. Right where you're going to clamp it onto the wire. Right. Okay. Any other?